Hello. So what we're going to be talking about today in class is CNC control. So what is CNC control? Well, CNC, uh, it is a type of machine control. So when we, when we, uh, when we look at the manufacturing environment, um, we usually have two different types of machining processes, okay? There is the manual control, which would be, I walk over to a drill press, I drill a hole, okay? Um, now the manual machining process has a number of benefits to it, but also a number of drawbacks. The first benefit that really comes from this is that it's very versatile. Okay, we have very skilled machinists in the world, people who can do just about anything. So if we just send our machinists and say, here, go make this, oftentimes they can. And, and they're very, very capable. So they have a versatile range of machining types that they can do. Okay, this can also be something that is very quick to do if you only have to do it once. Now, if you have to do it a whole lot, then it becomes more time consuming and it can be problematic. And lastly, um, the thing that, that really stands out about manual machining is that it's something that uh, robots don't always take instruction well. So there's no error in communication, assumedly, okay? The idea is you're not telling it to do something and then it goes over there and starts burning through holes. But there's also a number of drawbacks to manual machining, okay? One of them is error. Manual machining is prone to error substantially. You, anytime you make a person do something, person has shaky hands, person does the wrong process, puts in the wrong bit, puts in the wrong blade. It's a very error intensive process. This happens a lot, okay? You can't handle large quantities. Quite frankly, if you have to machine a hundred of one piece, that's gonna be a problem when you, uh, you only have one machinist. You have a couple robots, you can put the same program in all of them, they can all run it at the same time, okay? So you do get, you do get a whole lot more, uh, you do get a lot more capability with, with not doing a, a, manu a manual style of manufacturing. So the other one is a more automated system. Okay, the benefits to an automated system are that an automated system is much more efficient. It does exactly the same thing every time. Okay. Um, has much lower error and also has lower tolerances. Okay, human machining, our tolerancing is not as good as machining, as automated machining is yet. Um, but there are a few drawbacks with an automated system as well. It takes time to code. Okay, quite frankly, a machinist, a good machinist could get in here, prototype one prototype, much faster than a good machinist could come down here and code that exact same thing. And this is true for anything. You get to two products, the time may be comparable. Three products, the time may be comparable. You get to four or more products, this starts being more effective because you only have to code once. And it's just throw it in the machine, let it run, it'll run overnight, who cares? Okay. But there is also the other problem of 
you, when you run a job, it may not execute properly. And this is true for anyone. You know, even on a 3D printer, sometimes it just doesn't come out. And it has no idea it's not doing the right thing. And this does tend to be rather fixed because you have to code every, sign, every single time it does a process. You're not going to get a small adjustment for a different type of material. You're not going to get anything. You have to code every single incident of a brand new mill. So there are benefits and drawbacks to both. This is why the world will probably never get rid of machinists. And this is why the world has moved increasingly towards automated systems. Okay, so now we're going to talk about CNC. What does CNC machine mean? This is computer controlled manufacturing processes. Okay, and more than that, computer controlled machining. Okay. Three D printing is a CNC machine. It is a CNC style machine. What happens is it receives the same kind of code. It's a G code. It implements the same process of a machine going back and forth, iteratively constructing a product. And that's it. So 3D printing is one. You also have CNC mill, CNC lathe, CNC router, I mean, you've got CNC drill presses, you've got CNC any, anything really. Um, these three can usually handle pretty much everything. CNC mill, uh, it takes a spinning bit and it'll dive into a material and cut out the material, uh, getting increasing depth every time it goes down. You want to watch a video of CNC milling, it's actually really cool. Uh, CNC lathe, instead of the mill, it actually spins the material. CNC router is a lot like the CNC mill, but it usually is on very flat surfaces. Um, so very similar in that respect. Okay, and all that it is to take a CNC is it is it uh, inputs G code, which we'll talk about G code in a little bit. performs specific movements while the tool is operating and that's that's it that's it now this tool for a 3d printer is an extruder head which is itself a, a CNC machine inside of it. The tool for a CNC mill is a drill slash mill bit. It's uh, usually, if, if you're specifically doing milling and not doing drilling, you won't want the point on it. If you're doing drilling and not milling, you have to have the point on it. So it really does depend on the type of point that gets put in there. CNC lathe, uh, it's usually a, a pointed object that stabs into the material, CNC router. It's usually, again, another rounded bit, although it's a, a lot broader of a, a rounded bit. And it is meant to do drilling and uh, milling slash routing. So um, this is all that a CNC is. Now, this is very critical here. It takes these movements and it just moves the tool. CNC machining is the process of moving an operating tool. That's it. Okay, so now we mentioned G-code here. Let's go into what G-code is. It's not like a G-wagon, okay? Okay, not the same thing. G-code was developed in the 1960s. And all that, it, all that G code stands for is it actually stands for geometric code. And it defines curves geometrically. So if you create enough curves, that's it. 
you have a geometric representation of all of those curves, and this will say things like, move forward six inches, move up one half inch, okay? And it'll all execute these both at the same time. This one goes to one motor, this one goes to a second motor. Both of those operate at the same time, okay? And then there'll be a break or something, and then move backward one quarter inch and uh, move, I don't know, left three inches, something like that. And then another break. So here then these two commands would be issued, this one to one motor, this one to another motor. Okay, and all this is is it's creating a geometric representation of what each motor has to experience in order for that motor to operate. Now, the processor inside of the CNC machine will take this code, turn it into values of on and off, and send those values of on and off to the appropriate motor. Okay, and you can specify speeds in this more than just distance. You can specify times. There are a number of ways to execute a G code, um, but, but it is a very old structure. It came out in the 1960s. You'll notice that 3D printers also operate off of G-code. When you use MakerBot Print or when you use the Stratasys Cal uh, Catalyst program, both of those programs generate G-code and then that G-code is then sent to the 3D printer itself. Again, it's exactly the same thing. How do I move those tools? And the extruder head has a motor in itself and that's all it does is it, it heats up and then that motor in the extruder head will spin when it's told to at the speed that it's told to do for the length of time that it's told to do so. That's its G code. Okay, so this is universal across all CNC machines. It's become very standard in today's society. And we usually have programs that generate G code for us. We can throw geometries at it, you can throw an AutoCAD drawing, you throw a SolidWorks part, an IGIS file, an STL file, uh, and it'll convert the uh, uh, the G-code straight from it. So this is a much more straightforward process than it ever was. Okay. So the ability to move a tool and have the tool move in the paths that you set it to move in is one of the foundational aspects of CNC machining. Okay. Uh, and it's CNC control as a whole. It's the reason why we now have better machines. Uh, but we do run into several problems. If I have a CNC machine that has a mill bit on it, that mill bit can only cut round pieces out. So if I need to cut, uh, let's say I need to cut a, a square like this, and I need it to be, I need it to have a square hole cut out of it, of the inside of it, like that, if I need to make this, I can't use a mill bit. I can't use a regular mill bit because it'll round these edges. You'll end up with rounded corners. Okay, and then you can't help that. It's just the nature of CNC machining. So, engineers and their infinite brilliance have actually devised more complex CNC machines where now the tool itself operates on a separate G code and all of these operate at the same time. And now what you have is, instead of having a head that looks like this, the router bit comes down and forms a point. And by rotating that point to a specific location, you can get now a straight line. And we've found that we can do this. And you can actually cut corners out of it this way. Uh, this is this is very effective. Now the programming involved in this is kind of a nightmare because now you have to know what the distance is between here and here in order for the calculations to work. Otherwise you get the wrong sizing and all the wrong tolerancing and all of that. But that's all stuff that we haven't really had to deal with as engineers. This is modern machining and this is the direction that a lot of modern machining is headed. Okay, so you do have to be aware that the, we are coming up with newer ways to do this. Now this, this machine has uh, three more rotational axes than a regular CNC mill machine. It's gonna be more expensive. This machine requires more complex G-code because now you have to control those three axes as well. And it also requires very specialized bits. Only certain bits 
are work in this because they have to fit an exact distance in order to turn. Here it doesn't matter what the size is. You go down and lower it, you, you zero it, it's good. This it does. And that is a problem. And sure, I mean, you could probably put it in an application to zero it out by turning it to a certain angle and then zeroing it in several ways. You could probably figure out how to do that. Um, but this is a challenging process. So I wanted you to just get an introduction to CNC machining, some of the issues that go on with it, some of the capabilities that we have. In today's world, you set a CNC machine to do anything, you can 